All right, well, I finally figured it out, folks. Um, that's what the delay was all about. Uh, I didn't, hey, so I am live here with you all. So I had to figure this thing out. I had to figure out how to go live. It's not like uh, it normally is. So forgive me for being a little late this morning. But anyway, I'm Joe Robinson. Uh, I'm with The Color of Marriage. I am the facilitator for the Extraordinary Husband Community, the one that you all are in right now, this Facebook group. And I'm also the facilitator for the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass that we have with The Color of Marriage and also the Extraordinary Husband Inner Circle that we're going to be uh, having uh, as when it opens up again. So anyway, I want to welcome everybody here. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're listening to me, you have any questions concerning uh, being married or being a husband, go ahead and put them in the comments because that's what I'm here to do today. Uh, however, I know this is the first time that we're doing this this uh, in, in this group. So um, people might be a little shy and they may not know who I am. So uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, we're just not going to close up shop. We're going to keep on going. And I'm just going to introduce myself to you all so that you can get to know who I am. And hopefully when we get back on tomorrow, um, we, I'm going to be ready at 7 o'clock tomorrow so that I can, so since I know how to do this thing, because, um, you know, things are different. I go live on uh, YouTube all the time. Um, it's like, one, two, three, bam, I'm there. Um, so it's the first time I went live uh, in a while on Facebook, and they have changed things tremendously. But you know what? It's good, so we're here. So let's go ahead and uh, begin with a word of prayer, y'all. All right. So, Father, thank you for this time that um, we're having here in in this live here on Facebook in the Extraordinary Husband. So, Father, uh, ask you, Lord, to be in the midst of this this time that we're having to, today. Uh, ask you, Lord, that you um, illuminate my mind and help me to say the things that you want to be said. I pray for the men that are in this group and for the men uh, that are listening to this video, I pray that you would give them the insight that they need uh, to navigate their marriages in a way that will be fruitful, that will be uh, satisfactory, and I pray that you will help them to be a husband and help them to learn how to love better, lead smarter, and gain respect. Help them to do your will in their marriages, Lord. Help them to seek you in all that they need because they have you available in whatever directions that you send them in, I pray that they go in that direction so that they can get the help that they need in their marriages so that they can be the husband that you want them to be. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so today is supposed to be a live q and I'm supposed to be a answering any questions that you have related to marriage and being a husband. So I don't see any uh, questions in the comments. Uh, I'm going to look to see if I um, see any uh, others. But... Nope, I don't see any, so um, it's okay. But if you're here and you have a, if you have a question uh, or even a comment, you know, go ahead and let me know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. So, folks, uh, as you heard earlier, I'm Joe Robinson, and the first thing is I am with the Color of Marriage. My wife and I we do Christian marriage counseling. We've been doing that since 2012. We added the Extraordinary Husband and the Extraordinary Wife Masterclass several years back. Uh, we've had this uh, group on Facebook um, available, and at one time I was active in it, but unfortunately I got busy uh, being a husband, uh, being a father, and doing the counseling. So I was challenged to, to, to get back started with this group, and I am glad that I had, had I take, took the challenge to... Um, Get back started in this group because I want to help you uh, be husbands that God intended for you to be. I want you to love better. I want you to lead smarter. I want you to be able to gain respect and honor in your marriage. And, and all those things are challenging. Look, I've been married for 20 years and be, it will be 21 uh, June of this year. And let me tell you, it's, it's still somewhat of a challenge. But I am able to navigate through that challenge a lot better than I did in year one of our marriage in year two. And because in year three, it's either year two or year three, I wanted to give up. You know, I called my pastor and I said, uh, I done had enough. It's, it's done. My wife was saying some very disrespectful words to me. Um, 
and I, I just was tired of hearing those disrespectful words. And I just walked out the house. And, and at the time we had a cleaning um, business, carpet cleaning business. We also did um, restoration of houses. So I was so upset at that particular time that I just took a, take a tool, um, we call, I forget what they call it, but it, it doesn't matter what, what they call the tool. But I took that tool and I started scraping the ladder, letters off of the van that we had. I was like, I'm done, I'm over. I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, but I called my pastor. Good thing that, that I, I called my pastor because if I had not called my pastor, fellas, uh, we wouldn't be talking today uh, about what we're talking about right now. I wouldn't be able to introduce myself. So I called my pastor. He says, no, we're not going to do that. And I don't know exactly what he said, but he talked to me and we, we got into some counseling and um, did some counseling prior to that. But we got into some, to some counseling and, um, of course, he talked to us and, and, and helped us out. And, and he helped us out every every now and then. And then things got better. Uh, I started, um, you know, working more and uh, that kind of took me away from the house and, and things kind of settled down, but they were not the best that they could be. So anyway, I started, I started working at Delta because we stopped doing the carpet cleaning and the um, refurbishing, you know, doing the floors and, and things like that. Uh, we had stopped doing that because in 2007, of course, y'all probably know about the economy, how it went down and people stopped calling. And I was glad that they stopped calling uh, because, you know, I needed to do something different. And then I went to start working for Delta and uh, and during that time, uh, I knew I needed to make some more money to provide for my family because at Delta, I was only making like nine dollars and thirty five cents. But you know what? I had a job and I was able to do something uh, to provide for my household. And after a couple of months or so, I was able to do some uh, overtime to make more money. And then I also got a part-time job that, that helped doing security. So I was out the house and, and, and working most of the time. So therefore me and my wife didn't have the ups and downs that we did. So, and then she had a little work herself and we was, as she called it, play, playing tag. But before I get in, in any further into that, um, let me just tell you uh, a little bit about <clears throat> my childhood and, and me growing up and things that happened to me prior to my, you know, this, this marriage that I'm in right now. So I was born in Chicago, Illinois, in Cook County Hospital. Yes, that's where my life originated when I was born into this world. I was uh, born into Chicago, born in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, my mom, Odell Harris, I was born to the Harris family. So my mom was not married um, at the time when I was born. I had two sisters uh, I, and <clears throat> didn't know a lot of information, of course, growing up. I came to know a little bit more information. I'll talk about that um, some other time. But but my closest, my nearest, my most memorable memory of me being young is when my mom took us somewhere to uh, have us babysit when she was, as she went to work. I, I don't know what kind of work she did. I just know she took us to the babysitter and um, she went to work. So, and I remember this older um, black lady and I remember, you know, she giving us some, some soup and she made me put my bread in the soup. I don't know how old I was. Maybe I was two, maybe I was three. And she made me put my bread in the soup. Uh, no, nah, I didn't like that at all. And to this day, I don't like soggy bread. Um, and so if you babysitting kids, don't make them do something that they don't want to do. They don't, if they say they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it as far as the eating things and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do know that sometimes you have to do things because kids can be stubborn, but sometimes they truly don't want it. Cause I really didn't want that soggy bread, uh, in my soup. Uh, I could have ate the soup and I could have ate the bread, but I'm not a bread person. So, and I never, uh, I mean, I eat bread on sandwiches and things like that, but I'm not a bread, uh, a person that just goes and eat bread. Um, but I did eat a little bread, you know, growing up. But when I ate bread, you know, I don't know if y'all remember these things. Um, but look, I'm older, I'm older than a whole, a lot of y'all, but, uh, some of y'all are, are just as old as, as me. I was born in August 18th, 1964, August 18th, 1964. That's when, uh, I was born. So, um, do the, do the math and you know how old I am. So, you know, remember the days of the sugar sandwiches. Um, we take some sugar, put it on bread, and eat it. Um, yeah, we didn't have meat all the time to eat on our sandwiches. 
I wasn't too fond of ketchup sandwiches. My brother, Charles, he, he didn't like to take mayonnaise and just slam it on his sandwiches. But I wasn't that kind of person. I didn't like mayonnaise then, and I don't like it plain now. So anyway, yeah, and then this John Fortner. I don't, um, I remember his name because, you know, he, he introduced me to putting butter and toasting sugar sandwiches. Man, boy, I, I tell you, I thought I was in heaven when I learned that. But anyway, I grew up in the projects, Robert Taylor. Uh, for what I understand, they don't even have those projects anymore. But uh, we lived in the, on the 10th floor in apartment 1002. Um, grew up um, uh, in 1001. I forget who was in 1001, but I knew the Mitchells was in 1003. And then all the way down, I think in 1016, I remember Leroy and his family down there. But we did have a family in 1001. I don't know if we was a, as a, a, acquainted with them uh, as much. But anyway, I grew up in Robert Taylor Projects, and I went to Mary C. Terrell um, Middle School. I remember going there. Uh, I remember the first day. I remember, you know, the things that went on there. Um, but anyway, so as I grew up, we moved from the projects. We moved to um, to the South Shore area, um, and I went to Parkside Middle School or Parkside Elementary School. They, don't, they didn't call it middle school when I was growing up, but Parkside Middle School and I, well, Parkside Elementary School. See, I'm so used to saying middle school because that's what they got nowadays. Well, it was Parkside Elementary School. They started from first all the way to eighth grade, and I graduated from there. I wasn't always a smart student, but I did graduate. Got into some fights, and, and my, as a matter of fact, when I was in, in, in the projects, I probably got in fights every day. Not because I wanted to, just because there was just bullies and, and, and so forth and so on. But anyway, I survived it. And then I went to South Shore High School, played a little bit on the football team, I uh, didn't graduate high school because, I don't know, I'm, I probably would, I, I was lazy. Maybe I just wasn't encouraged, and I just didn't really see the, I, I, I wanted to go, but I was hanging out with people, and I guess I wasn't in, inspired. See, because when I do something, you know, I have to be inspired and, and, and know a reason why, you know, I'm doing it in order for me to do it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going a little bit over to 720 because we, we're late, so we're going to end at 730 today. But I'm going to be back on tomorrow at uh, 7 a.m. I'm going to be on time. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be early because now I know exactly, you know, what to do to get on this thing. So um, anyway, I went to South Shore High School, uh, went to High Park for a little bit, hung out with my uh, buddy, Teddy Bell. Me and him grew up in uh, over there on um, 67th in Ridgeland. He stayed on the other street, but his house faced it parking lot that uh, my apartment building that I grew up in um, was next. Him, he, 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 his mom and his sister Tara, they stayed over there. I forget the, the street. I think it was East End. I'm not 100% sure, but I know what I stayed. I stayed on the block of 67 in Ridgeland, and um, and we, we hung up, grew up together, and eventually uh, I went and got a job. I went and, and got a job at... Um, McDonald's. So that was my first real job. I worked at McDonald's um, and did that for a while. And if anybody could get fired from McDonald's, I did. Uh, it was totally my fault. I was being late and being influenced the wrong way. But, you know, I'm glad I did because, you know, it, 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 it got me to get out and start doing something else other than McDonald's because, you know, at McDonald's, I couldn't even get a manager job because I didn't have a high school education, but I did get the job and had some good friends there. But after that, you know, uh, and it might have even been before that, one of the managers told me, I think it was Stan, uh, I can't remember his name, it, or it might have been Bill. See, I remember the, these names because they, they, were, they, were, they were my first managers, first people that I worked for. So one of them told me, you could, you're you not going to be a manager until you actually, you know, get your high school di um, uh, diploma or graduate. So I think I was like 19, 20. So I went back and got my GED. And let me tell you, um, I did very well on most of the parts of the GED, uh, except for like history. Uh, so I had to go do that over again. Um, but eventually I got my GED. But let me tell you something that helped me very well, very much with getting my G GED. And I'm going to end with this. And I think this is a good place to, to end. Um, I did very well on the reading of my GED. See, because prior to getting my GED and, and um, working at McDonald's, even though I kind of slipped um, and, and back, backslid or however you want to call it, 
um, when I first walked, started working at McDonald's, I had just, I had just got saved. Uh, but actually, I, I believe I, you know, I didn't just get saved then. I got saved back when I was six or seven. I remember getting baptized. I remember accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I remember the parishes I should go to there. Uh, grandma house and we used to have church there but I never really went to church on a regular basis I was never di discipled so I really was not um, really um, given the information that I needed to keep living the way that I needed to live after I got saved uh, when I was about six or seven with Reverend Lee back in the projects in Chicago um, but listen um, I was at church and um, St. Mary's Baptist Church in Chicago. And I remember my Uncle William, he was up there preaching. And God says he wanted me to be, I believe God told me he wanted me to be a pastor. And that's when I rededicated my, uh, oh, he wanted me to be a preacher or whatever. And, and, and I'm going to get back to that because I'll tell you more about that. But at that time is when I rededicated my, that's when I rededicated my life back to to Christ, maybe I did it before. I, I don't know, but that's when I really got started. Get back into it. I started reading my Bible, uh, and, and really, I really wanted to read the Bible. I read the Bible all the way through. I was witnessing to people. I remember this one guy I witnessed to when I was at McDonald's. Me and him used to work on the grill. I should talk to him uh, all the time about God uh, and so forth and so on. But reading the Bible is what helped me to pass most of the GED test that I took because. I was reading the King James Version, and you know the King James Version is not the most friendliest version to read, but that's the only thing that they had out at the time. Now they have all these other kind of versions. I, li I like the English Standard Version and the New American Standard uh, Bible now, but King James was the only thing. I don't even think they had the New King James. But look, I read that thing, and I read it from cover to cover. I think I may have read everything, maybe e except for Ezekiel, but I read it from cover to cover, and I really was enjoying reading the Bible. Look, I was on the bus reading the Bible. I was at work reading the Bible. And and so I was reading the Bible, but I got caught up in the world and, and kind of straight away, especially when I went into the Navy. Um, when I went into the Navy, I, I was still, you know, talking about, you know, the Bible. And, and then I started hanging out with the wrong crowd and started doing the wrong thing. And my life Cat turned upside down, didn't make mean I wasn't a Christian anymore. God kept reminding me over and over the fact that I was still a Christian. Um, but I'll tell you more about that story uh, and as we go on. But listen, I'm going to end the line today. Um, didn't have any questions. Um, but hey, hope you come back and listen to this video and learn a little bit about me. Uh, I'll share a little bit more about myself and and, and, and eventually we're going to get to how did I become being a marriage replacement specialist, a Christian marriage counselor, and how did we start the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass. We'll talk about a lot more of that. Um, but anyway, I am glad to be here. I'll be doing the lives every morning this month, um, and I'm going to try to do it the rest of the year, but I'm going to be doing it as God leads me. If y'all got questions about who I am, if you got questions about being uh, married, if you got questions about being a husband, if you got questions in general about life, I'll do my best to answer all the questions that you have. Leave them in the comment, comment um, in the group, comment in the Extraordinary Husband group. Send me a friend request uh, as well. Uh, give me an email so I can add you to our email list. We got some good material that we send out at least two times a week. We got marriage replacement tips, marriage replacement prayers. Uh, people have always said that they enjoyed getting those, so uh, I would like for you to get them as well. And then also like to give you some of our promotions. I mean, we're not always promoting. We, we usually give you some good, valuable information that's going to help you with life and especially your marriage, especially being a husband. And many times we, we help wives as, as well, too. All right, so I'm going to end this video today. Uh, for, all that, for all of you who are listening, I thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to this video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray out, and uh, I'm going to see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Father, thank you for this time that we have had, um, that you allowed me to have to introduce myself so that the people in this group can get acquainted with um, who I am um, so that they can know that I'm just like everybody else, that I didn't get to, the, to be to the place where I'm at right now overnight, that I had the same struggles that they had, 
help them to see that and, and, and help other people to get here on the live. And if I'm doing it at the wrong time, send me the message so that I can do it at the right time. It's in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And by the way, you know, uh, I asked my wife, I say, you know, what do you think I should talk about? Because I was thinking about things and struggling about what I should talk about. And I knew that if, if no one came on, if I had any, didn't have any questions, that I was going to answer some of the questions there. But my eye says, why don't you introduce yourself? That was a great idea. Thank you, Rhonda. All right, y'all. See you next time. See you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Take care. Bye-bye.